All right, Romans chapter 1. Let's go, let's go. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. So the background of this is that Paul is writing an epistle to the Roman church to address issues around doctrine and, you know, opinions and, you know, just perspective. And he, his emphasis in the book of Romans, the core teaching, is on the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Okay, so in Romans chapter 1, we talked about the gospel. We talked about that earlier. Number 2, we spoke about Jesus. We spoke about how Jesus, we spoke about how last week, how everything referred to Jesus. Jesus, the whole of the prophets. The Bible says that all of the prophets and the law were speaking about me. In the book of, in Genesis, the tree of life was a symbol of Jesus. You know, when, when, when um, the tree of life was a symbol of Jesus Christ. When God killed the animal and he used them to cover their nakedness, that animal killed was a sample of Jesus because when Jesus Christ died on the cross killed, it was from him that what we got the garment of righteousness to cover our nakedness. You know, um, Jesus, Jesus, Isaac being offered was a type of Jesus. Even the place where Isaac was offered was actually called Golgotha. It was like the same thing Golgotha where Isaac was actually offered. The reason why God did not allow Isaac to be killed is this. Because if someone killed, if human beings were allowed to kill the name of Jehovah, people would always say forever that God accept human worship. So God never wanted that to do. So the Bible says that when Isaac was on the tree, that God accepted it in a figure. So the Old Testament is full of what? Of types, of shadows of Jesus Christ. All the offering, of all the offerings of the Old Testament, the Passover, let me, let me just show you that quickly. Let me, t- <laughs> Lord, will help me today. First Corinthians chapter 5. So when you know, people say, when it says, when I, when, I, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. People don't really understand that that picture of when I see the blood, that that Passover is actually Jesus Christ. That lamb that was slain. So guess what? The Bible says that each family will take a lamp and kill the lamp and put the blood on the lintel. So the lamp will die for the family. So the angel of death says, when I see the blood, I will pass over. So that lamp, that Passover lamp is Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's look at it. And I'm saying so to you, verse 7. I'm saying so to you that so when you read the Bible, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, can you put it on the screen? When you read the Bible, you need to be able to see the Jesus in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. See, it says, Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye put on the new leaven, as ye were on leaven. For even what? Read, read, read to go. Even Christ, what? Is what? So, Paul says that, hey, when I read the Passover story, that Passover is who? Is Jesus. Because that Passover is symbolic. Number one, it's it, very symbolic. Number one, it had to be a male lamb. Jesus Christ was masculine. Number two, it had to be a lamb without blemish. Jesus Christ was the one that was sinless. Number three, when you got the lamb, the lamb had to live with the family for some days. Jesus Christ had to live on earth for some time, though he came to die for us. Number four, the lamb had to be killed for the family. Jesus Christ was killed for the sins of the world. Number five, the blood had to be posted. Jesus' blood was taken to heaven. Number six, they had to eat of the lamb roasted. The lamb had to be roasted with fire. Fire is the symbol of judgment. It means that Jesus Christ must go through judgment. Fire was the, the, the lamp was go on the fire, judgment. And they had to eat of it. Eating the Bible is believing. It says, Whosoever believe, it says, don't eat it raw, eat it cooked. Because eating it cooked means I believe in him. Glory to God. When you read of the story of Noah, Jesus was the ark. People, people always see the story of Noah. They never understood it. Jesus was the ark. I was just the ark. Everybody stayed in the ark. The ark felt the pressure of God's judgment, the flood. The flood, the ark was under attack. Boom, boom. The flood came against the ark. But the people in the ark were saved. Jesus Christ brought the pressure, the rot of man's sin. But everyone that is in Christ is saved because they're in Christ. So the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, or if you are in Christ. So the same way Noah was in the ark, we are in Christ. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I mean, everything points to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jesus Christ says, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth for three days and three nights. The Bible said there was a brazen serpent. He said the Son of Man will be offered like a brazen serpent. Everything points to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. All right, so we, we, we said it last week. So today, we want to read from verse 3. I want to come from verse 3 to verse 11. I hope I can do that. I couldn't the first service. The Bible says, Concerning the Son Jesus Christ of our Lord, which was made of the seed of, of David according to the flesh. 
this is very powerful. I, I covered something very powerful in the first service. I, I, I said that, um, oh, how will I say this in a simple way? Let's just skip it. <laughs> Go ahead. Because there's no simple way to say something that is that deep. You know, yeah, verse, verse 4. The Bible says this. He was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of obedience and by the resurrection from the dead. So I wanted to talk about the importance of resurrection. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Same book of Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Someone says, so why do you take time to teach all of these doctrines? The reason why is that it's good to go to a church where they tell you God bless you and don't explain the Bible to you, but you will not be deep. And the other things will not line up because doctrines are foundational. So you will not understand some things. All right. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. The Bible says this. Jesus was delivered for our offenses. What does that mean? Jesus died for what? Our sins. So why did Jesus Christ die for our sins? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. So what is death in the Bible? Death in the Bible means what? Separation. Separation from God. So that's what it means. So that's why Jesus Christ, why, what did he say on the cross? When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he said, someone said, how can he die and say? Because the death you understand is when you die and you don't talk again. But that's not the real death. The spiritual death. Separation from God. So when Jesus on the cross and he died, he said, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Why did he say so? For the first time, Jesus was separated from the Father. And that was spiritual death. For the first time, Jesus always called God throughout his life, my Father. My father, my father. But on the cross of Calvary, it became our sin substitute. So because it became sin substitute, God had to depart from him. So for the first time, he could not say my father because God wasn't the father of sin. He said, my God, creator, creator, Elohim, 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 Elohim. That's the Hebrew, Elohim, Elohim, Elohim. He couldn't say my father. So on the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ became... So two people died for two reasons. People die for three reasons. For their offenses. People die as martyrs. Martyrdom. So they die for something they believe. So for example, if Unam de Carlo is killed right now, he was martyred. Because he died for something they believed. I hope he's not. And I'm not talking about politics. I'm just giving an example. You know, so that's something they believed. But just because he did not die because of his offense or something believed, Jesus died as a substitute. That means he took my place. I was meant to die. It took my place. So why did he have to take my place? Because the wages of sin. Because sin must be punished. Sin must be punished if God is going to be just. Because if sin is not punished, Satan is going to ask God, why didn't you forgive me? So why is Satan being punished? And there's no way to punish, to carry the punishment for sin. So he must carry his own punishment. And that's why people go to hell. Why do people go to hell? Because sin is punished. And forgiveness is offered, but people go to hell because they refuse to accept the forgiveness that is offered. Glory to God. That's why people go to hell. People don't go to hell because God is bad. People go to hell because they refuse to accept the forgiveness that is offered. All right. So let's keep going. Back to Romans chapter 4, verse 25. I'm just showing you what, what it died. So the Bible says he was delivered for our offenses, but listen to this. He was so when he died. He paid the wages of sin. But why was he raised from the dead? He was raised from the dead for our what? Justification. The word justification is an old English word meaning to make rights. Make what? Rights. So, hey, l let me, let me, who is here now? Who is here now? Um, Patricia, you have your ring? Do you have your ring on? you have your ring on? C can you come off the stage? That's something you can do. Thank you. Watch this now. So I met on the road, this, this Patricia, just, just, just show us your ring, you know, you know, just, just come to us. Be like, hey, hi, how are you? How, how, how is your husband? <coughs> how is your husband? He's very well, thank you. Question, why did I ask or think she had a husband? Because that's a proof that she's what? She's married. Watch this now. When Jesus Christ paid for our sins, what was the proof that we're forgiven? The proof we're forgiven is this. The person that paid for my sins was released. That means the tail gem has been fulfilled. So, the, so, so when Jesus was raised from the dead, dead, I was like, oh my God, for him to be raised from the dead, that means this thing is sorted out. 
See, for me to see this ring on her hand, that shows she has a husband. That's a proof. The resurrection is a proof that my sins were really forgiven. Yes, Glory to God. The resurrection is really the proof that my sins were really forgiven. Just like when I see Patron, I see the ring, I say, how is your husband? The only reason why I think she's married is because she has a proof that she's married. If she now says, I'm not married, how can you not be married when you have rings on? Because that's an abnormally. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, let's take the example again. Let's, let's kind of take the example again. Um, Casey, will you come quickly? You know, Casey, will you come quickly? And I love our choir. Today, they're, they're, just, they're just like Roman soldiers and Roman attire, putting so much effort to make it look nice. Thank you. Thank you for being so Roman. Hallelujah. So, this is Casey here. So, let's say, let's say that, you know, you know, God forbid, I, I went and I stole, like, I stole, like, you know, a, a, a bag of rice from ShopRite. And, uh, you know, I either had to pay 100,000 naira or I had to go to jail one month. And Casey just says, no, 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 you can't do this to my pastor. This is my pastor. I love him to your death. Don't you love me to your death? Exactly, I know. You know, Casey, I love him to Whatever you want to do to him, go ahead and do it to me. So they say, you can go. And I did to Casey. Then after one month, I see Casey. Or maybe three weeks. And I see him walking on the road. I say, ah, for him to walk on the road, what does that mean? What? It means that the case is settled. It's either he must have paid 100000 or he must have served the jail term. See, if Jesus took my place and he died for him to be raised up from the dead, that means the case is settled. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, the resurrection is a proof that God has nothing against me again. So, if I go to ShopRite, the reason why I know they can't hold me is this. Come on. The guy that stood for me said that the case is settled. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. So, resurrection is a proof that our sins are forgiven. Resurrection is a proof. So, so let's, read, let's go back to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Verse 25. Who are delivered us for our offenses and has raised us for our justification. Verse, look at the next chapter, verse 1. It says, this is the result of resurrection. He says, therefore, being justified by faith, he says, being made right. See, how do I know I'm okay with God? He said, being made right, we have peace with God. Let me use another contemporary word. Another contemporary word, we are cool. That's really good. Hey, hey, I'm cool. You know what that means to me? Hey, you know the thing? Most of you really think that God is upset with you. When you pray, when you, as soon as you're praying, as soon as you're praying and things are not going well, your mind keeps saying that, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Why is God not answering? Why is God not answering? Because in your mind, God is my problem. Hey, the Bible says that because Jesus resurrected, we know that we have peace with God. God is not mad at me. God is not angry. God doesn't have anything against me. Do you know there's, there's a way that when your husband or wife is unhappy with you, you know, let's even talk about marriage. There's a way that as a man, you want to ask your wife for sex and you know your wife is not happy with you. What do you do? You don't have boldness. What? You hold back. If, even if you want to try, you, you still, I, I should just say, what? I say nothing. But you know what? Because you, because, because you know she has something against you. But let's say a day before, you just bought her, you just bought her the new, um, the new um, 5 Series BMW. And she told you that nobody had done that before in her life. And she told that she loved you the most. What would happen at night? You know, see, there's a boldness. <laughs> the married men know what I'm talking about. <laughs> married men say amen. Married men say amen. There's a boldness. Just say, baby, come over here. You know, you, be, be, because you know we are cool. Is that not so? Oh, stop tapping your wife. That's not like, you know, wow. <laughs> We're in church now, praise God. There's a boldness. That's a boldness. Because you just say, babe, you know, because you know that we're good. You know we're at peace. So, see what, see what the Bible says in chapter 5, verse 1. He says, therefore... He said, being justified, because Christ was raised from the dead, because we are not guilty, we have peace. What does that mean? When I have peace with God, there's a way I problem my business. I, I don't problem my business like, Father, you think, you think. No, God is cool with me. So I'm saying, Father, the biggest deal in all I got, I receive it. Hallelujah. Because I know there's that boldness. There's that what? Boldness. There's that 
boldness hallelujah you know i'm not saying lord please please do no 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 there's that boldness i have peace just like the man he can just say babe come i can say father because there's a boldness have you noticed how many times every time you pray the first thing that comes up your mind is your sin because satan uses your sin to torment you that god will not answer you it says, how will God do this for you? Do you know who you are? Do you know how terrible you are? You say, Satan, it's not about me. It's about Christ. Because of Christ, I have boldness. And let me say this to you. The more bold, see, the, the greater the boldness in prayer, the more answers you see. When you're not bold, Father, this month now I'm 37 years old. And I'm a female child. As if he does not know. Ha, who will marry me? And you'll be making people talk to me. Talk to me. You are the one allowing them to talk to me, to talk to me. See how they are talking to me. See, see how you're praying. You're praying as if God is your problem. Uh-uh. We are cool. Hey, when I know that God has me, Father, I thank you. Though I'm 37, I know you're working it out for me. Because I know we are cool. I'm able to rest in God's plan. I'm not saying, Father, look at me. God is not my problem. God is what lies with me. Hey, when I'm going for an interview, they say, ah, this one went to Yale, that one went to Harvard, and you look at you, Epoma. Hey. Hey, Stanford here. Epoma. You say, you, you talk like David. Ah, my trust is not in the armor of, of, of what? Of Saul. My trust is not in big armor. My trust is in the Lord. There's that boldness. I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Are you here? Doctor says, I'm sorry, you know. You know, doctor, adjust this glass. Hmm. Huh? You say, Doctor, what? Shh. Hey. You say, Doctor, what? Shh. You should put that again. He said, Let me go and see another consultant. It goes. It comes back and says, I knew it. I, I was just waiting for confirmation. Because if you see this test, let me look at it again. It's gone and come back home. Oh, look at it again. Then by now, your blood pressure has risen to 180. I said, yeah, you, you, the womb is blocked. If you don't know who you are, you say, God, why? Because in your mind, God, why is this happening to me here with me? If you know you and God are cool, God, what an opportunity to show your power. Hallelujah. Are you asking God why? When you ask God why, it's because you think God is not against you. When you say, God, it's an opportunity to show your power, it's because you understand that God is with you. See, there's a way you relax. See, see, I want, to I want us to read that verse again. Let's read chapter 4, 25 into chapter 5, 5 verse 1. Let's read again. Chapter 4, verse 21. So it, says, so it starts with this. He says, Jesus was delivered for offenses. And was raised up for justification. Let's use another word for justification. This chapter 4 verse 25. Chapter 4 verse 25. Give me another translation for justification. Yeah, another, another, another translation. See, it says, It was raised to life to make us what? Right with God. Some of you, as soon as you want to pray, you say, Father, I know. I know that. I know that you're not hear me. I know. But I'm asking for your mercy. Because I know I'm a sinner. I know. I know I'm a terrible person. Listen to me. Sometimes people that don't know Jesus have more trust in just as Christians. Let me say something. Everybody look up here. Nothing kills people's faith and righteousness than religion. Religion, I'm telling you. That's why the most religious countries are the poorest countries in the world. Write that down. People always say, why are religious countries very poor? The reason why is that there's something about religion that kills people's self-esteem. Because religion always tells you, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. God doesn't like you. You're not good enough. He keeps making you look down on yourself. So we have this bunch of people that don't have self-esteem, self-confidence. But that's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is this. Now, there's therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. That's the message of the gospel. That they which have received life have received the gift of righteousness and shall reign in life and forever and forever. That's the message of the gospel. When people go to religious service and they come out, everybody 
they feel so terrible about themselves. And see, before you came, we know you were sinners. He knew it. You came to know that he loves you that way. And his love is powerful enough to transform you. That is what is called good news. There's no good news telling who you are. Good news is telling that you are changed by his love. Hey! 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 He said he was raised to life to make us right. If Jesus was raised to life, that means the case is settled. If the case is settled, was it in the case? Verse 5, chapter 5, verse 1. Oh, glory to God. This would change your prayer life. This would change your prayer life. Many of you, you know why you find it got to tighten and give? You are afraid. It will not be enough. I'm going to suffer. How can you suffer if you are cool with God? How can you suffer if you are buried at parties? How can you suffer if your birth is like the perfect? How can you suffer? You're not sure. I don't know. Praise God. Look at it. Romans chapter 5. I want it to, I want it to soak in your spirit. Hey, they said, hey, you can't have a child. He said, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he said, God is with me, yo. <sighs> they said, you can't get married. He said, God is with me. You can't get a job. God is with me. Don't be too conscious of your failure. Be conscious of his own blessings. He says this, therefore, because of the fact that we're right with God, since we have been made right, oh my God, he says, we have been made right in God's sight by faith. Meaning that by f- without faith, you can't see this thing. If you keep looking at what you're doing, you will never have faith. Everyone look up here. God knows no man can be perfect by his own works. That's why he raised up Jesus Christ. That through him, he will look at us and bless us. Because if we're meant to work for our blessing, everybody will fail. I told you this story. Two stories, powerful stories. This lady, um, I was praying in the next level and I saw a vision. And I saw this lady that was trying to get a child. And the Spirit of God says, you've been trying to have a child. But the reason why you don't have the child is because you think you did an abortion. And God is punishing you. And I said that God does not punish, punish forgiven sins. And when I said that, some people cannot even accept that. They say, what do you mean? How do you God doesn't punish for... I said, don't you understand English? If the sin is forgiven, it can't be punished. If it's punished, it's not forgiven. You can have both. What's called punish forgiveness? Is that called punish forgiveness? It doesn't exist. If it's free, I don't pay for it. If I pay for it, it's not free. The lady said, I received it. The next three months there about, she wrote me back and said, I'm pregnant. Listen, she said, I'm pregnant. It was not prayer. What Satan was doing, Satan was using the guilt of that thing to make sure she does not receive. Many of you, it's the guilt that you're not good enough for God. That God is not kind to you. That's making you not receive. Everybody look at me, please. I want to say something to you. Please look at me. Look at me, please. If you are here, or you have a friend that has a very difficult life in this service, or you have a friend giving this service, let him watch this part of you on YouTube. The, most, the people that have the most difficult life have a personal inner image that God doesn't like them or pay attention to them. And that's the reason why their life is that difficult. And they think it's because of that that their life is that way. They don't know it's that thinking that they made their life that way. When you see them and talk to them, you will hear it. You will hear it. Life is not fair to me. God is not faithful to me. I'm doing everything. And I don't know why it doesn't like me. And by them, in fact, they, they do a lot more. You see them, they come more to church. They are fasting. They are crying. They are breaking. They don't understand how someone like, you know, if you will come here, when you say lift up your hands, he goes like this. He doesn't be like so energetic in prison. They say, but the Lord is blessing him. I don't want that. But me, when you say lift up your hands, I will stretch it. I will climb on the table. When they say pray, I will do like a horse. Ah, yeah. Ah, they say, but this one just for the hand, Father. I don't understand this. And this is what they don't understand. Your action doesn't change your mindset. And deep down, someone says, if I'm that situation, what do I do? This is the first thing. Begin to embrace God's love and say, God, I'm sorry. 
you love me. I feel loved. I accept your love. If you do that for 40 days, your life will turn around radically. How do I know? I've told people these things many times. They've done it and their life has turned around radically. I've told ladies that nobody came their way to do this. And after 40 days, they came back to Pastor Bolaji, what did you do to me? Everybody is toasting me. He said, what did you put on me? I said, nothing. I just, the moment you embrace God's love, it began to radiate from the outside. It began to attract everything. Glory to God. See what it says. It says, therefore, we'll be made right. Right what? In God's sight. In man's sight, you may not be right. By what? By faith. What is it? We have peace. Hey, we have peace. We are cool with God. Because we are cool. Why are we cool with God? Because of what we did? No. Because of what Jesus our Lord has done for us. The reason we are cool with God is not because we're intelligent. It's not because we pray the like Jacobin. He says because we are, because of what Christ has done for us. If I have peace with God, oh my God. One couple on the mainland church called me. They've been trying to for a baby for about eight years, they're about maybe seven years. And they finally got pregnant. And the lady was spotting, spotting, spotting. The husband called me on the phone when he called me. This is a strong guy. He, st- he just started crying. He said, Pastor, pray. I'm tired. I'm tired. This is the first pregnancy in seven years. My wife is bleeding. Bleaching, bleaching. He said, I don't go anywhere I'm in the hospital. She must not lose this pregnancy. And I said, Don't talk to me when you're crying. Call me when you're back. And he felt that was firm because I wanted to talk to him firm. I said, Put the speak on the phone. I don't talk to your wife. And they stopped crying. I said, The pregnancy was not what you did, it was grace. If it was started by grace, it cannot be finished by works. I said, When you see the bleeding, Go on your knees and say, Father, you love me so much that you will not do half abandoned project with me. You love me so much, you will finish it. He that's begun the good work in me will complete it to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, No matter what the doctor say, shut your ears and keep giving God the glory. They called me back. They said, Pastor, we are eight months now. That happened. That happened maybe sometime in February or January. He said, we're eight months gone now. I said, he that began it is able to finish it. Listen, stop thinking what God started by grace. You can finish by works. Relax. Relax. Relax in this grace. See what it says. He says, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. Hey, Someone says, I'm going. Oh my God, it's your birthday. And you're wondering, I'm 39 now, I'm not married. And your, your mother is asking, say, Father, isn't it amazing because I'm 39 today? Naturally, I thought I'll be married. But thank you because I'm resting in you. You have great plans. You want to blow my mind again. You did it in my career. You blew it. You want to blow my mind with marriage. Thank you, Jesus. That is because you know you have peace. Let, let me give you another good example. The two of you come. You know, I love you guys. Come. Come. Do you have like a rope or something? Like something you can tie? I want to tie our face. You can have a microphone. I want to give it to your wife. You. If your husband just came back home, if your husband if you came back home and say, ties your face and say, no question, ties your face and say, follow me, what will you do? I'll follow him. Good. If this pastor here, you know this pastor, yes. comes to your house <laughs> and has the courage, I don't know if he has the courage, and ties your face and says, follow me, what will you do? Help. <laughs> you say help. Help. Listen, the title does not matter. You follow who you trust. Listen to me. The reason why he's able to follow the husband, he knows we are cool. We have peace. We have relationship. With him, I don't know him. I can follow him. When you know you have peace with someone, even when you don't understand what is going on, you rest in the peace. You are blindfolded. You see? So it's blindfolded. You say, follow me. You say, 
lift up your head, enter the car. Honey, where are we going? He said, just follow me. He said, just, you know, sometimes you're wondering, why did I lose the project? I don't know why I lost the project. Why did I lose the money? I don't know why I lost the money. I don't know what happened to the doctor. I don't know. But I trust him, so I'm following him. I'm not questioning, I'm following him. The reason why I don't question is because I'm following him. I'm following him. I trust him. The reason why, because I know. You know why you, know, you, know, you follow him? Because you know he loves you. Is that not true? True. And you know, whatever happened to him is what? Is his headache. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when you know God loves you, you say, God, I'm not troubled. Whatever happened to me is your headache. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. You get the x-ray. You just take the x-ray. Say, Father, that's it. <laughs> because cast your care on Jesus for you what he cares for you how do I know because I have peace we are cool we are cool let's pray